I am continuing my series on vintage baking. So in this video, I'm going to make the best buttermilk cornbread muffins recipe. Keep watching. If you're new to my channel, I'm Denise Jordan, and I teach traditional homemaking for today's woman. So if you want to learn more about making and keeping a home, subscribe. And double tap that little bell icon so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Okay, let's jump into it. A friend told me about a vintage cookbook called Foods That Will Win the War and how to cook them. And I thought, that sounds like a cookbook that I need to take a look at. And when I checked it out, I was struck by how the recipes were presented and the ingredients that were in them. And it made me think about the situations that we find ourselves in today. Many of us are under stay-at-home orders, so we are being forced to cook the foods that are in our homes. And I thought, this cornbread muffins recipe would be perfect if you've got to cook with what you've got. It's nice and easy. So let me get my apron on and we'll get it started. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the cookbook and why it was called Foods That Will Win the War and how to make them as we go through it. Now this recipe called for two cups of buttermilk and I didn't have any buttermilk so using what I have I decided to make sour milk to replace the buttermilk. I put two tablespoons of lemon juice in a pitcher and then filled it to the two cup measure with milk. I'll give it a little stir to just to make sure the lemon juice is dispersed throughout and then I'll let it sit on the counter for five minutes. The recipe also called for one teaspoon of baking soda, but it wanted the baking soda dissolved in a little bit of cold water. So I put the baking soda in the dish, add a little bit of cold water and set it aside so that it can continue to dissolve. Then it's time to grease my muffin tins. I always use Crisco shortening. I've just used that since I was a girl at home. That's what my mom used, so that's what I use today. And I grease them very, very thoroughly because I really want to make sure those muffins don't stick. Now I like to use the wax paper to cover my fingers to grease the pans and I am greasing it very, very carefully because I don't have any muffin liners to put in here. So now that these are greased, I will set them aside and start working on my dry ingredients. In the meantime, my sour milk is sitting. It's got to sit for five minutes. So I measure out two cups of cornmeal into my vintage mixing bowl. And I love using this bowl. I got it from my grandma. And this is actually a vintage Tupperware cup as well. I think I got that years ago from some Tupperware party someone had. Two tablespoons of sugar. One teaspoon of salt. And then I like to give it a little stir before I add my fat. Now this recipe calls for two tablespoons of fat and it suggests using drippings. However, I don't have drippings, I don't save them anymore, so I'm going to use two tablespoons of shortening which will serve as my fat. So I'm just going to cut the shortening into the cornmeal just real quick. And then I gave the cornmeal and shortening a good rub. You pick it up and you rub it between your fingertips. This just helps to make sure the shortening is all dispersed and I've got a nice crumbly mixture. Now it's time to add my egg and I like to crack my egg into an individual dish just to make sure the egg is not bad and then I'll give it just a little bit of a whisk 
After I add the egg to my dry ingredients, I pour in my sour milk, my buttermilk, so to speak. And then I give all of that a good stir, making sure it's nicely mixed together. And the last thing I add is my baking soda solution, where I've dissolved the baking soda in the water. I add that, and then again, stir it well to make sure all the ingredients are well incorporated. The interesting thing about this recipe was that it called for no flour. I'm used to putting in a cup of flour and a cup of cornmeal when I make my corn muffins. But this one called for no flour because of course they were trying to conserve. Now I want to get a nice peak on my corn muffins, so what I'm going to do is set this batter aside for about three minutes to allow it to do its thing, to rise, so to speak, and then I'll fill my muffin tins. You can see here that things have started to rise. This is what we wanted to see, so let's get these into the cups. And we're just going to fill them about two-thirds full. Once I get the muffin cups filled, I'll pop it in the oven and they'll bake at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. This cookbook was written in 1918 during World War I and they were trying to support the war efforts. As a matter of fact, the United States and Canada was asked to export 450 million bushels of wheat to the Allies. Secondary to crop failures and other factors, they only had 300 million bushels to export. So they said the only way to make up the difference was for the people on the home front to conserve. So this buttermilk cornbread muffins recipe was perfect because it used no flour. Now that larger pan that sat underneath the other muffins, they weren't quite ready and they had indentations in the center. Could be because I set them under the other pan. I probably shouldn't have done that, but I thought I'll leave them in the oven and let them bake just a little bit longer. In the meantime, I took a toothpick and stuck it in the center of my smaller muffins and it came out clean so I knew the muffins were ready. So we got these out of the oven, now let's give them a taste. Well, they look pretty good. Mmm. They're delicious. They're not sweet, which I tend to like my corn muffins sweet. But they do have that kind of a nutty, cornmeal, grainy flavor. They're very good and they'll be perfect with some butter and jam. The top is nice and crisp. And the bottoms aren't mushy. Amazing. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Vintage Cooking where I made these beautiful buttermilk cornbread muffins. They are absolutely delicious and I think they speak to the time in which we find ourselves in today. We are asked to stay at home and that means we are forced to use what we have in our freezers, our fridges, and our pantries. Using what we have to feed our families to keep them strong and healthy. If you like this video, you may also want to check out my vintage baking where I made baking powder biscuits and they were absolutely amazing as well. And they were so good with strawberry jam and butter. But you may also want to see some of the other recipes that I have that you can use to feed your family. I've got a hamburger vegetable soup, mac and cheese, shepherd's pie, turkey noodle soup, lots of things that you can probably make with the foods that you already have at home in your freezer, your fridge, and your pantry. 
And if you really want to go way back into traditional cooking, nutrient dense cooking, you might want to check out my friend Mary at Mary's Nest. She makes food like the pioneers used to make. I will link her channel above and her ch and uh, one of her videos below as well. That woman can whoop up some stuff and she makes a lot of it from scratch. Things like yogurt and cream cheese and bone broth. All kinds of things that right now you might find yourself in need of. Well, my friend Mary can show you how to make it. And just so you know, I've raised three children and I have managed a home for more than 45 years. So if you want to learn more about the art and science of homemaking, subscribe. I would love to have you as a member of the TNT community. And in case you're wondering about the science in this particular recipe, it's the baking soda. The baking soda is what helps the cornbread muffins to rise. And it's also the lemon juice that you put in the milk to get it to clabber, as my mom used to say, or curdle, but it makes it sour. That lemon juice, the activation of the lemon juice, or the vinegar if that's what you choose to use but those chemicals with the milk causes it to clabber and then you end up with sour milk or buttermilk. The art of homemaking is the intentional use of self to prepare the food the way you present it to your family and the science comes from the different things you put in it to make it do what it does. Now I'll get the resident taste tester in here to see what they taste like. Mmm. What do you think? Tastes great. Okay, so but how do they taste? It tastes great. <laughs> well, what do you mean by that? What What does it taste like? You know what my corn muffins usually taste like. Do they mm. taste the same? What do you think? What are your thoughts? How does it taste? Is it sweet? Is it sour? Is it salty? Um, what do you taste? It tastes good. It tastes like nice and moist and kind of sweet. And nice, tastes nice. Okay, well that's what I wanted to hear. 